you've been learning about value investing, finance, just regular investment for a while now, but you don't know where to go next. You're getting confused about the vast amount of information on the internet. You don't want to waste your time on crap information. You want good information um, and reliable information. In this series of videos on value investing and finance education, you will find those answers to those questions and much more. My name is Jason Rivera. Welcome to Value Investing and Finance Education. Hey, Jason here. Today's video, I'm going to show you what could be the most undervalued countries to look at for potential investment. Before I get to that, though, I need to let you know you can get this uh, video as a podcast anywhere in the world for free on all major podcasting platforms, Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, Anchor, and more. And get this as part of the I Love Value Investing podcast anywhere in the world for free. Okay, so over the last couple of weeks, I've told you why the U.S. market is massively overvalued, why the Indian market looks like it might be about fairly valued to slightly overvalued, and why the Filipino market looks like it could be undervalued. Today, I'm going to tell you <clears throat> based on total market to GDP, which is Warren Buffett's favorite uh, country valuation metric to look at country PE ratio and the country uh, CAPE ratio, what countries to me look like they might be the best potential places to invest in. Before I get to that though, I need to give you some context to this video, which I talked about in the other videos, which will be linked below this. Um, so if you want some context to those or some more context, go to those videos and watch those. But I'm going to give you a brief recap of the context here when it comes to country valuations. I don't care if a country is like the US and it's massively overvalued or if it's extremely, if the country stock market is extremely undervalued. In the grander scheme of things, I don't care because I can find, if I can find an undervalued stock, an individual stock in any country in the world that I will look to invest in, I will invest in that stock whether the individual stock market is overvalued or not. The main reason I look at this though is to get an idea of what the country's valuation is because yes it does come into play a little bit because for example in the u.s if i was to buy u.s based stock right now and most of its operations were there in the u.s i would require in all likelihood a larger margin of safety to invest in the u.s based stock right now because it's so overvalued for example on the other side of things if i find a country that is massively undervalued depending on the situation and how stable the country is I may require less of a margin of safety or more of a mar more margin of safety if there's major political or socioeconomic issues in the country, for example. Um, having said that, there are countries I will not absolutely invest in no matter what right now either because I frankly don't trust their governments to that they're putting out A, that they're putting out truthful, 100% truthful information. B, that the stocks in that country won't be expropriated by the government or taken over by the government. Those countries, that list is small for me. Um, right now, that list is Russia, uh, Venezuela, and those two off the top of my head. I'm sure there's more that I can't think of right now. Um, but those two off the top of my head are ones I will not absolutely invest in right now because I'm, I would be worried that the government might take them over if, for any reason, essentially. Another one I don't really look at much, and I explained this in the video on India, is India, the Indian stock market, the Sensex. Uh, because I can't, again, unless rules have changed since the last time I looked, as a U.S. citizen, legally, I cannot invest in Indian stocks. So that also limits things to where, what if your country, for example, has a limit on to what citizens and foreign people can or cannot buy stocks in your country. So as a U.S. citizen, again, and less rules have changed um, recently, as a U.S. citizen, I cannot legally buy stocks in India, so I frankly don't look at stocks much there, even though I'd like to uh, potentially buy stocks there. So having talked about those caveats, pretty much any country I look at, another reason I look at this is to the proverbial Warren Buffett uh, blood in the streets comment. If there's issues in a country, if there's, and this could range from banking issues like in Greece and Portugal years ago, 
This could range from short-term kind of political issues. This could range from currency issues. If there is some kind of issue in a country and it's undervalued, that may be a good place to look to invest in stocks in that country. Do you need to be careful? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but that just, it might, it also might be a good place to look for potential investments as well. So having said all of that, the countries based on this metric, this is the total GDP market cap to GDP metric. And again, I explained what this is, I think in the US video, which is linked below. The, generally, the lower this bet number is, the more undervalued the stock market in the country is. So Germany looks undervalued. Italy looks extremely undervalued. Spain looks undervalued. Russia, Mexico, Indonesia, and Turkey look undervalued. Hong Kong, on the other hand, looks enormously overvalued. So does Switzerland. Canada is kind of on the edge. Japan and the U.S. are overvalued. Most other countries kind of fall somewhere in the middle. But this is just one metric. I don't use just one metric to evaluate anything. So let's go to this other spot to look. So based on these metrics combined, the CAPE ratio, Schiller PE, and the regular PE, again, I think I explained all this in the U.S. video that I talk about. So if you want some context into what those mean more specifically, go to that video. Austria looks undervalued. Russia, again, Czech Republic. Poland, generally, again, sorry, I should have said this. The lower numbers here, the better. Or at least the, most the more undervalued, potentially. Hungary, Turkey again, uh, South Africa is kind of on the edge. On these, I kind of look for anything about, uh, under 20 is what I look for. Your threshold might be lower, might be higher, but this is kind of what I look for. Mexico is kind of on the edge. Malaysia is kind of on the edge. Hong Kong is kind of on the edge. Which Hong Kong was massively overvalued over here. So... What happens when you see a company that is massively overvalued or undervalued on one metric and massively overvalued or undervalued on another metric? What happens then? Frankly, I start with the countries that look like they're the most undervalued on all metrics. So, for example, that as of this case would be Russia, Turkey, um, Thailand looks undervalued on these. Indonesia, Indonesia would be one, and then general emerging markets, so they, have, they combine things down here. So those are the kinds of countries I would look in. I have a couple notes on Russia. I've already talked about Russia and why I won't invest there. Turkey. If you look to invest in Turkey right now, you need to be extremely careful. They're having massive currency issues over there and potential hyperinflation going on that they, at this point, don't look like they're controlling very well. That <laughs> could lead to enormous problems. Um, hyperinflation has led to country collapses, uh, like the Weimar Republic back before World War II, um, was it Zimbabwe years ago, and then Venezuela, which is still sort of collapsing as far as the last thing I heard. So currency issues and hyperinflation can be extremely, extremely dangerous for shareholders. So if you're going to invest in Turkey, you need to be extremely careful, extremely careful. I've already told you why I wouldn't invest in Russia. Indonesia, I don't really have much notes on there. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever bought a stock in Indonesia, but I know I've looked at stocks in Indonesia and I know that I have stocks on my watch list that are Indonesian, but I don't think at this point I've ever bought a stock there, but I don't have any concerns at this point that I know of in Indonesia. What was the other one? Italy. I don't have any major concerns that I know of there. Czech Republic was only on one. Singapore, was that on both? Singapore was sort of undervalued and on that metric and undervalued over here. So that might be a good place to look. Again, no major red flags there that I can think of, at least in terms of the major like socioeconomic political stuff that I'm talking about. So I don't think I have any more notes on that. So as of this recording, some European countries, Germany, Spain, Italy specifically, look undervalued and might be a good place to look. Turkey looks like it's undervalued, but you need to be extremely careful because of the currency issues and hyperinflation that's going on over there. Russia, 
if you have more of a risk tolerance for Russia or you know the Russian market better than I do, that looks undervalued. Singapore looks decently undervalued. Indonesia. So there are pockets or what looks like pockets of undervaluation, even though the U.S. market and many markets around the world are massively overvalued. Not all of them are. So you still can look at places to invest. These are the places I would start first. But again, that just because something's undervalued and it looks undervalued doesn't necessarily mean you're going to find individual investments that fit your specific criteria that are undervalued either, which again is what we all look for and what we all struggle to do on a consistent basis. So, but I hope this helped. I hope this gave you some places to begin looking if you're researching stocks. Um, I hope, again, I hope this helps. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, let me know below if you have any more specific information on any of these com uh, countries that i talked about let me know in the comments below if i missed something if i didn't explain something well enough let me know in the comments below as well if you're watching on youtube we really appreciate it if you like love share subscribe comment all that good stuff and if you left a or if you hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we release a new video and releasing new videos all the time if you're listening on the podcast uh, we really appreciate the like, love, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and a review because the more reviews, views, and listens we get, the more people we can help. If you're looking for free resources on how to become a better value investor faster, you can get those below by getting access for free to a PDF copy of my book, How to Value Invest. Buy free gifts, including my valuation and analysis and um, profitability metric calculation templates and seven tips guide on how to pick great stocks. And also below there is information on our masterclass as well if you're looking for direct help in one of our paid programs. But until next time, have a great day. Talk again soon.